Hello everyone, here is Feras, and in this video we will explore OSGI. I will explain basic concepts in OSGI and its major application areas. So, let's get started. First, what is OSGI? OSGI refers to Open Service Gateway Initiative. It's a set of specifications for a dynamic module system and service platform in Java. Its primary goal is to enable the development of modular and dynamically extensible systems. Ok, and what is modularity here? Modularity is a way of writing and implementing a program or a system rather than implementing it as a single monolithic design. We can implement it as different independent unique modules and this will help in optimizing application development and reduce system complexity by minimizing coupling. OSGI provides a framework for building applications as a set of independently deployable and version modules. This means that for some applications, we need to support hot deployment so as not to disrupt the running services when deploying new modules and others have to be able to work with different versions of the same package for the sake of supporting external legacy systems. In OSGI, a single component is called a bundle, which is the fundamental unit of deployment. Each bundle is a self-contained module that may expose services, consume services, or provide other functionalities. A bundle at the end is a jar file that can include the following resources. Java classes, and these classes can be organized in packages, and the bundle may export certain packages to allow other bundles to use them. Also resources such as configuration files, XML files, images, or any other non-Java assets needed by the bundle can be included. These resources are often accessed using the bundle's class loader. Bundles can include libraries and dependencies, typically in the form of jar files. These dependencies may be packaged within the bundle, allowing the bundle to have its own class path. Alternatively, bundles may declare dependencies on other bundles, and the OSGI framework will handle the resolution of dependencies at runtime. And last thing is OSGI metadata. OSGI requires specific metadata in the form of headers in the manifest file within the jar file. Metadata includes information about the bundle, such as its symbolic name, version, exported packages, imported packages, and potentially the bundle's activator class. Here is a simplified example of a manifest file for an OSGI bundle that includes some of these elements. Import package specifies that the bundle imports packages from the OSGI framework. Export package indicates that the bundle exports a package named com.example.api. Require bundle specifies a dependency on another bundle, which is org.example.dependency with a specific version range. By including dependencies in the require bundle header or using other dependency management mechanisms, OSGI allows bundles to declare and manage their dependencies contributing to the modularity and maintainability of OSGI-based applications. So, OSGI provides a dynamic module system that allows bundles to be installed, started, stopped, updated, and uninstalled at runtime without requiring a system restart. This dynamic behavior makes it possible to extend or modify a running system without downtime. In addition, OSGI supports versioning of bundles, allowing different versions of a bundle to coexist in the same environment. So this is crucial for managing updates and ensuring backward compatibility. The service registry in OSGI allows bundles to publish services and discover services provided by other bundles. This promotes a loosely coupled architecture where bundles can interact through well-defined service interfaces. The service layer provides a communication model for the bundles, whereas in the modularization layer, 
there is strict rules for sharing Java packages between bundles or hiding packages from other bundles. Each bundle has a defined lifecycle with methods and states like the install method with installed state that indicates that the installation step has been successfully completed. This also indicates that required steps are performed such as defining bundle properties and analyzing its manifest file. The resolve state comes before starting and after stopping. Bundle is found in this state when OSGI resolves and satisfies all of its dependencies and makes class loading operations. The starting state indicates that the bundle will be in when the start method of the activator of the bundle is called, but not yet as successfully or unsuccessfully finished. Active means the bundle is successfully started and running. Stopping indicates that the bundle is in a state when the stop method of the activator is called, but also not yet as successfully or unsuccessfully finished. The uninstalled state is when the bundle is removed from the system. So in this situation, there is no transition to another state and the component must be installed again. There is also an optional security layer that enables administrators to control access to resources and services. This is especially important in scenarios where different bundles come from different sources. And lastly, OSGI allows bundles to be marked with the minimum execution environment they require. And a good practice is to have a bundle with minimal dependencies. So OSGI is widely used in various domains, including enterprise applications, embedded systems, and IoT solutions. It provides a flexible and scalable foundation for building modular and maintainable Java applications. Popular OSGI implementations include Apache Felix and Eclipse Equinox. In the next upcoming video, we will dive into Felix and see some of its applications. So, stay tuned.